Are you down with downforce or are you all about your simple, clean body lines? The one modification that always seems to get everyone up in arms and debating in the comment section has to be aero pieces and more specifically wings and spoilers. Even though it's super common to find some sort of spoiler or wing on pretty much any vehicle nowadays, even from the factory, that really wasn't the case a couple, two, three decades ago. Arguably one of the most common modifications that people do to their cars and some of the most recognizable modifications from our favorite Fast and the Furious movies, wings and spoilers have been a bit of a controversial topic as to whether or not, you know, do they look good? Are they actually functional or are they even worth it? Even more so when it comes to one specific platform in general, and that just so happens to be front wheel drive cars. Why the hell would you put a wing on a front wheel drive car? That bench would serve more use at the public bus stop. You're trying to save on plane tickets or something? It looks like someone activated the flying cars cheat in real life. These are things that we hear all the time, and now it's time to dive in on this topic and go over the effects that wings and spoilers can have on your car and talk about whether or not they can actually provide a benefit to platforms such as front wheel drive cars on today's episode of Myth or Fact. There's nothing worse than finally piecing together your new wheels and tires and you're trying to find a local shop to like actually mount the damn things. I'm pretty sure we've all ran into the one old guy who gives you a funny look when you tell him that you want to mount your 215-35 tires on your nine and a half inch wide wheel. Well, guess what? Fitment Industries takes all of that stress off of you. We offer free tire mounting, balancing, and shipping on all wheel tire packages and we do all the dirty work for you so you can order your wheel tire package. It shows up to your door all nice and stacked and nice and neat and you just throw it right Right on your car. That way you don't have to deal, you know, with old Joe giving you the stink eye when you walk through the front door. Anyway, enjoy the video. If we take a look back at what some people would consider the golden age of racing, the race cars of the 40s and 50s featured smooth body lines. You won't see any side skirts or splitters or most importantly, you won't see any spoilers. The thought back then was cars needed to be as smooth as possible. The smoother these cars could slice through the air around them, the faster that they would be. Which, when it comes down to you know, the general laws of aerodynamics, does make sense. If you want something to move through the air faster, you want as little disruption to that airflow as possible. If you look at some of the most popular cars that were used for racing back then, cars like the Aston Martin DB2, the Jaguar XK120, and the Porsche 356, you'll notice a lot of similarities in the way that they were designed. They were sleek, they were smooth, every corner was round, which in theory was the best design a race car could have. Because remember, sleek meant fast. The problem is, however, this type of design was based solely on how smooth the airflow could go over the vehicle, similar to how they were designing aircraft back then. Coming out of World War II and with the introduction of jet engine technology, people were just like hyper-focused on speed. Which country could have the fastest fighter? Who was going to break the sound barrier first? It was record after record after record that was being broken, the new ones being put down the sights of all these manufacturers. You had inspiration from people like Howard Hughes back in the day with his H1 racer in 1935, which literally had every single rivet shaven down and made flush with the skin of the plane because no drag. I mean, the plane did hit 392 miles an hour in 1935, which broke the transcontinental speed record. So maybe, you know, the crazy bastard had a point, but there's something that we forgot about here. Planes and cars are entirely different things and cars rely on something that planes don't. Traction. It wouldn't be until 1961 when a Ferrari 196 Dino SP showed up at the track and there was just something a little different about it. On the rear end of the car, there was a little lip that came up right before the back end of the car, and this would be the first instance of a spoiler being used for a performance application. And you know what? This changed everything. These car manufacturers soon realized that all of the smooth body lines and rounded rear ends were actually doing more harm than good, especially when they hit higher speeds. The term spoiler coming from the fact that the additional piece to the car would spoil the flow of air and cause drag. It completely flipped the script. Something like a spoiler, something that was added to the car to specifically increase drag, sounds like a step in the complete wrong direction, when the name of the game beforehand was to create the smoothest flow of air possible. Throughout the 60s and into the 70s, 
70s, more and more types of spoilers and splitters were getting added to race cars. We found out that drag created in the right areas of a car can help tremendously with the handling performance of the vehicle, providing more grip and more traction and higher speeds and through corners, which allow drivers to push the vehicles more and more and being able to come into those turns a little bit faster and help decelerate when they needed to. Rear spoilers were adapted almost immediately, either in the form of an additional part added to the car or just kind of introduced into the actual body design of the car. Chin spoilers became increasingly popular, creating the needed downforce and drag in the front end of the car to help balance everything out, to keep the front end of the car lifting up at higher speeds. And over time, more and more advancements were made, and some of the most iconic cars of today featured these advancements. The 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona is a perfect example of this. We all know it now for the massive wing that this thing had on the back end, which at the time, most people thought looked absolutely ridiculous. However, it specifically is what helped that car hit 200 miles per hour. And now today, that car is absolutely loved. Step back into the present day and you can easily see how absolutely crazy and wild these types of aero pieces have gotten. It's truly a night and day difference. If you look at Formula One cars, you'll notice a ton of pieces throughout the entire car. The front wing, the barge board, the side pod, the air box, the rear wing, which includes just a couple things like, you know, the rear flaps, an F duck, a beam wing, a gurney flap, and many, many more pieces that are all fine tuned to maximize these cars performance. And it's more than pieces that are easily visible as well. You have things like the diffusers, the under trays that are all an integral part of handling performance in today's race cars. Congratulations, you just graduated from the history section and you're now enrolled in Gels' School of Physics and Aerodynamics. You're gonna do great, trust me. Just make sure you take a couple notes because there's gonna be a quiz on this later. So how does this all work? And can something like a wing or spoiler have a positive impact or provide a purpose on something like a front wheel drive car? Well. First things first, I'd like to introduce you to a little something something known as Bernoulli's Principle. Daniel Bernoulli, who is a very smart individual, states that an increase in the speed of a fluid, which can also be air, with a decrease in static pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. This is known as lift. It's literally what makes planes fly. If you look at the airfoil, the flow of air around the top surface creates lift underneath the wing and it's what lifts the plane upwards. Now, when you take that and we're talking about cars, wing and downforce, just imagine taking that airfoil and flipping it upside down to create lift, well, downwards, downforce. But when we're talking about downforce, spoilers and wings are what come to mind. And the argument is always, well, if you're not powering the rear wheels, why in the hell would you need a wing in the rear? And the simple answer is, it's all about balance. A lot of people think that, you know, just by adding wing on the back of the car, that's all about providing downforce so you don't spin your tires right off the line. Well, I hate to break it to you, bud, but that's just not the case. Any piece that provides intentional drag or downforce in a specific area of a car needs air moving over it to take effect. It's like the whole thing, meaning that these parts really don't come into play until you hit a certain speed. It's not so much adding downforce to make sure you don't do a burnout at launch. In fact, that's not the case at all. It's so that the car remains stable at a higher speed and helps with the deceleration coming into corners. Like I said, it's all about balance. If you have a massive rear wing, odds are the car also has or needs something in the front to provide downforce as well to truly balance out the car. It truly does not matter what drivetrain that vehicle is running. You can have a rear wheel drive monster, an all wheel drive rally car, or just a front wheel drive track car and have aero all around the car. You see it in the form of, like we said, the splitters, the canards, your, your wings, your spoilers, whatever it might be, as long as that vehicle is balanced, it can handle those high speeds without having the front end lift up or the rear end try to swing out. This is what they are intended for. So we'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And of course, don't forget to check out wheels, tires, and suspension all over fitmentindustries.com where you can package your wheels and tires and we mount balance to ship them for free to your door. So you can just throw them on your car right away. And like I said, you don't have to go talk to old Joe down the block and he's gonna look at you real funny. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Jels from Fitment Industries. We'll see you later. Peace.